Hello everyone, I'm Marty Pospisil and welcome to my April 2023 market update on this beautiful Vancouver spring day. Without further ado, and after a sip of that wonderful cup of coffee, we're going to get started. Some really interesting stuff I want to share with you today. Let's jump right into the stats uh, from the month over month that we've got. Amazing spring boom continues. The prices are increasing. There's people buying. There's a really, really good frenzy happening out there. Um, if we're looking at the detached houses, the year over year activity on my table is down by 44%. Um, the benchmark price year over year from this time last year, detached houses for Greater Vancouver prices are down about 11%. And last month we had a jump up in detached houses in Greater Vancouver of 2.7%. Significant jump up in pricing. We'll talk about why that's happening later. Attached townhomes and half duplexes. Activity is down year over year by 37%. Uh, benchmark price year over year, they're down about 8%. And last month we had a jump up in pricing of 1.7%. Very significant gains. What's going on? Um, attached apartment and condos, uh, year over year activity down 43%. Prices down only about 5% year over year. And last month we had a jump up of 0.7% in pricing. So really interesting that trend that we saw last month is continuing with a little bit more fervor um, and higher increases in the last month. So what's hot, what's not? As you recall, um, the metric I'm using to measure the activity in the market is called the sales ratio. And all the sales ratio is, is the absorption rate of product every month. How much is selling? What percentage is selling every month? If less than 11% is selling, we're in a buyer's market. There's downward pressure on pricing. If between 12 and 20% of the inventory in a given month is selling, we're in a balanced market and prices should remain relatively stable. However, once we break that 21% sales ratio, that is a seller's market and there's upward pressure on pricing, typically multiple offers, etc. the kind of market that we've seen in the past and is actually starting to happen. So let's jump into each area. Let's look at detached houses on the west side. What's happening here, as you recall, last month we were in a balanced 14%. Our peak of last April was 21%. And this month we're actually at 20%. So we've seen an increase from last month of activity from 14% to 20%. It's still a balanced market, but still significant increase in activity on the west side. Um, very interesting. This is all related to pent up demand and low inventory. Again, I'll get into more detail on that later. Let's jump on to condos and townhomes on the west side. Last month we were at 23% sales ratio, very strong. We had a peak at 56. This past month we are at 33%. So it jumped from 23% to 33% sales ratio, a very strong seller's market. Um, does this look familiar? We've seen this before. Some incredible activity, condos, townhomes on the west side. So let's jump into downtown condos and townhomes. Last month we were at a very modest balanced 16%. This month we have jumped to 20%, just shy of a seller's market. We're still in a balanced market for condos, townhomes downtown. Um, I've noticed it. Some product that's been sitting in the downtown area has actually been turning over because of that increase in activity um, for that particular market segment. Now let's jump over into the east side, detached houses, Vancouver east side. Last month we were in a very healthy 18% sales ratio. This month we've jumped up to 29%. 11% increase in the sales ratio to a very strong seller's market. So extremely high activity on houses on the east side. What's happening? 
I know inflation's coming down a little bit, but it hasn't come down that much, and certainly the rates haven't. So why is this happening? We're going we're gonna to dive into that. I get excited about all of these changes of activities. Um, let's first of all uh, go into the east side, condos and townhomes. What's happening with that particular product? Last month we were at an extremely active 32%. This month, surprise, surprise, we're actually at 38%. So not only was it a strong seller's market last month, we've gotten even stronger. We're seeing multiple offers in a lot of these seller's markets. We're seeing record prices um, compared to the last eight months. Uh, and we're seeing some really, really good, good um, uh, sale prices at being reported on, on, on these. So what a great opportunity to sell in this sort of um, eye of the storm before we get into this uncertain summer. So really, really good sales ratio of condos, townhomes, east side. What's happening in the burbs? Well, typically across the board in all of the suburbs, we've seen month over month on detached product an increase in the sales ratio. So this isn't just happening in Vancouver, it's happening pretty well throughout the lower mainland with the exception of North Delta and Maple Ridge. Now, let's look at attached. We're looking at attached monthly variances in the lower mainland, same story. All the sales ratios show an increase in activity, one exception, out in mission. So across the board, our market has gotten extremely busy. Now, what's happening with prices? As expected, the last couple of months, we've had some price increases. So the average price in our historical um, RABGV average price graph shows that uptick in houses. Now, look at that average price compared to where we were in the peak last spring, significant gains. And townhomes, we're starting to see that little bit of a jittery upward trend in prices, and that's the same with condos. Now the average MLS sale price, again, across BC, you can see we had that peak last spring, we had the trough that we've just been through, and a real significant spike in the average MLS price across BC. So very interesting to see What's going to happen? Well, who can tell? There's so many factors from banks failing to inflation uh, to uh, potential recessions. Uh, well, Trump's in the news now, so that's distracting a little bit uh, uh, of the activity in the media. Uh, but let's talk about the drivers that I follow to tell how busy we are. Now we've got our market enhancers in green, we've got our price market deterrence in red, and of course the one that we've all been talking about for the last while has been the low inventory levels. Now, that low inventory is really what's a fundamental in these increases in activity and prices. And in coupling with that, I have turned the consumer confidence and buyer demand green because people are out there buying and they're buying out there in droves. Why is that? We'll talk about that in a bit. But those are the two big market enhancers right now. The market deterrence, of course, inflation, it does seem to be stalling out and recovering. Um, increases might still take place, we're not sure exactly, um, but that seems to be changing to our favor, but it's still a deterrent, and that, of course, reflects on the cost of borrowing and the mortgage rates. And I've got some really interesting data talking about this and forecasting when that's going to change. So that's the outlook on our market drivers. Um, consumer confidence. So really, we've got multiple offers. We've got hordes of people showing up to see property. Why is that happening right now? Well, if you look at it uh, and you look at how the market works, people are always going to be having kids. Well, not always, um, not everyone, but many people will continue to grow their families and they're outgrowing their homes. So they need to buy a larger place. There's mature homeowners that are having to die, downsize into one level condos. That's gonna continue happening. Nothing gets put on hold there. Um, 
People are expiring, unfortunately, and people are being transferred to Vancouver and have to find a place to live. Um, and the rental situation is extremely aggressive right now. Uh, there's very, very low vacancy, so there, most people are moving into the city want to buy. Young people have savings now to buy their first home. They've been waiting for a while. Um, that pent-up demand has been building and building in the background, and people don't want to wait any longer. And many people are immigrating to BC. More on this later. So all of this pent-up demand, when the market volume is down, continues to build. And the analogy I like to use is it's kind of like a dam. If there's not enough water spilling out or not enough sales taking place, that level of water behind the dam continues to rise and there's going to be a point at which it spills over. So let's look at some of the stats, um, what we're talking about, why this pent up demand is happening. Now this is really interesting. If you look at the 12 month rolling average for March of 2021, there were over that previous 12 months 36,636 sales um, in the Greater Vancouver area, in our real estate board of Greater Vancouver. Last year, um, in up to March, we had 42,290 sales. But this year, because of all the stuff that's been happening, we only had 24,275 sales. Remember, all that demand keeps building up, and it's probably happening because a lot of people were waiting, but the demand is still there, but also the listings. Let's look at that. Here you can see, in the beginning of 2022, the listings went up to around 11,000 units in the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver, but as we hit this year, they dropped down about 30% to about roughly 8,000 listings overall in all the product in Greater Vancouver. So when you've got that demand building in the background and the number of units to buy dropping, you're going to have a point at which that water starts to spill over the dam. So if you like this analogy, um, this might be a little over the top with the dam breaking. Let's look at another one. Here's another dam breaking. Um, it's not exactly a dam breaking, but I think you get the idea. It's at least spilling over the top. We might have a dam breaking next year. I kind of like these videos. Um, but anyways, let's Let's look uh, at the next item I wanted to show you, unemployment, still low. Unemployment rate in Canada is now 5% and in BC, 4.6%. Good news. Um, that hasn't changed or is actually decreasing slightly. Now let's talk a little bit more about that buyer demand. Um, as you know, the federal government has banned foreign home buyers for a period of two years. Now, that's really interesting because they're trying to deter that activity uh, in increasing the market pricing to make housing more affordable for Canadians. Understood, but let's look, is that actually working? This is really interesting because there's very weak evidence that Canada's foreign home buyer ban is actually achieving its objective of lowering the home prices with an estimated reduction in home sales of 2,400 units in BC over the next two years. So that's 1,200 less sales a year in all of BC as a result of the foreign home buyers ban. So sounds relatively interesting, but let's look at another factor. Let's look at immigration to BC. What's happening there? BC is going to welcome 217,500 new immigrants um, from 2023 to 2025. That's 100,500 more new permanent residents would be expected based on historical averages. So this is an increase. And this translates to 20,500 unit increases in housing demand for these new permanent residents. So they're buying property. So we've got a drop of about 2,400 homes from the foreign home buyers, but we've got 20,500 more homes needed 
for immigration. Very interesting. So the demand increase um, in immigration is approximately five times as large as the foreign home buyers ban, and it's estimated to place a significant demand on homes and home prices. So you can see this is another driver in the background, the demand that's taking place that's impacting our market. And of course, the federal government realizing they had made a mistake because developers weren't purchasing property uh, to develop into housing, they've relaxed the foreign home buyers ban and it no longer applies to vacant land or land for redevelopment. So they've relaxed that to allow um, uh, global developers to come in and, and provide more housing in Canada. So that's interesting. So let's talk about TIF. What's TIF up to holding the market in his hands? How's inflation uh, bearing with respect to the increases that took place? Remember, um, it's been said that the overnight increases that the Bank of Canada has followed, those eight increases of 4.5%, will take about 12 at the earliest, but 18 months to take effect. That's starting to happen now, and we're starting to see that inflation um, curb, but the retail sales are still way up there throughout BC. People are still shopping, um, but you do notice that the inflation rate has now dropped down to 5.2% uh, percent, uh, in Canada. We like to get between 2 and 3 if that's possible, so we still got a little ways to go, but certainly making some progress. Now, you're reading all of the headlines, Canada's inflation rate eases, but the cost of food is still increasing. Um, that's been in the news a lot. Uh, the feds uh, down south want to raise the rate despite the turmoil in the financial system. Whoa, we got banks failing. It's a real dance that they're having to play now um, with respect to uh, tightening the fiscal policy and inc increasing the overnight lending rate in order to curb inflation. But if they do it too much, uh, we're starting to see some banks failing. So that's not actually good either. So they're easing off a little bit and they're playing that little bit of a dance. England still increasing to four and a quarter uh, and despite what's happening with the banks. So there's this whole uh, tug of war going back and forth. Um, and uh, it's really interesting to watch. Uh, the Bank of Canada said they're ready and they're poised uh, to take care of our banks if needed. We're in very solid ground here in Canada compared to the U.S. with their many banks, so that's good news. Um, but let's look at what happens if the Fed in the U.S. raises their rates and Canada stays put, because that's kind of what's happening. The Bank of Canada said, oh, we don't want any turmoil. Let's just hold the, the um, overnight rate where it is. But the feds are saying, these guys over here, um, we're going to increase our rates despite what's happening. But if the U.S. Fed raises their overnight rate and the Bank of Canada stays put, the Canadian dollar will fall. Why is that? Well, because investors will begin to buy U.S. bonds rather than Canadian bonds because they'll have a higher rate of return. And as the dollar falls, this is interesting, the cost of imported goods will increase, further increasing inflation. So if there's a disparity between the Canadian and the U.S. Um, overnight rates, um, that could result in inflation increasing in Canada. Canadian goods are cheaper to purchase in the U.S. Our exports will also increase, further raising inflation. So really interesting, um, all these dynamics in play of how our economy and inflation rates and um, uh, lending rates and, and um, all of these factors are impacting our market, um, how even a disparity between the two countries can cause inflation here if we're falling behind. So that's really interesting. So let's look at the cost of borrowing. I've got some really cool data to share with you here. Um, of course, the cost of borrowing is related to the inflation rate, and that's what they're trying to control uh, with the fiscal tightening. But they maybe went a little bit too far, as we uh, remember the Silicon Valley Bank. We've got some uh, turmoil that's happened in Switzerland, as we all well know. So they're trying to balance these increases without causing that turmoil in the banking system. Our rates have sort of hit a peak, uh, but here's where I see 
a, a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. And what I mean by that is, I don't think we're going to have a significant market um, change upwards, long term, big increases until the rates come down. And everyone asks, when are those rates coming down? Well, I've got some forecast data here for you. Let's just look at the blue variable rate. Here we are now this year. Um, the forecast is that variable rate will stay where it is until a point where it starts to dip, which is February 2024. So February next year is the anticipated date at which inflation will have come down enough that uh, the Bank of Canada will start to lower its overnight rate and that will result in the variable rate and of course the fixed rates to drop. So that's interesting. That being said, I can confidently say if that happens, we're going to have an incredible spring in 2024. So that's kind of interesting data to look at. Inventory levels, one of the other major drivers, and prices are determined by supply and demand. It's the old economics 100s class that many, 100 class that many of you attended. Um, if the supply remains low and the demand is high, as we've talked about, prices are going to spike, and that's what's happening right now. So um, as you can see, where we had significant de declines of the sales ratios in the past, uh, we had a lot of inventory, especially back in 2017-18. Right now, we got a lack of inventory. So all the stats keep repeating and repeating. Our biggest issue with respect to the market and the prices are being controlled by the lack of inventory. Okay, so if you look at active listings throughout the Lower Mainland, Vancouver Island's high. Um, uh, Lower Mainland, again, doesn't seem to be making any significant gains in inventory, so that's got to change closer to home. Let's look at the west side inventory levels for houses. You can see it's gradually started to increase in the west side for houses from 403 all the way up to 476. That's not a significant increase to meet the increase in demand that we talked about. So prices are going up. If we look at attached product on the west side, same story. It's increasing very gradually from December, um, but not significant enough to offset or match that demand. So what's next for prices? You can see our sales ratios on the west side are increasing. East side sales ratios are increasing. You saw that in my summaries in the beginning. So the market is getting very busy. You can see the prices have jumped up in that average price graph. And if we look at sort of the forecasting graph, that's what's happened from spring of last year. We're starting to see that uptick now in pricing. And of course, all the factors are playing, but the biggest one is the inventory. That's what's controlling our pricing right now. If there's a major change, it will change our market. So, um, in conclusion, Canada's recession, is that going to happen? Maybe. Um, we're still waiting for the full effects of the Bank of Canada overnight rates. I think you're going to see inflation continue to drop slowly, but probably no changes in the mortgage rates as we talked about until next February. Um, inventory levels are still way too low. We need people to list their properties. We need to get some volume going here. And prices will be dependent on the continuing demand and the inventory levels. Nothing new there. Um, we could probably still see another 10 or 15% depending on what happens this summer. Very hard to call. We may not see these increases continue through the summer. It might level off, could drop. So we'll see what happens. Um, remember, uh, this will be also available on a podcast. If you prefer that, we've got some new podcasts coming up that uh, we're excited to share with you. We're going to be recording those over the next week. That's my April 2023 market update. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm here to answer any of your questions. I'm so excited to see our subscribership grow. Uh, so let your friends know about my update and I'm, I'm happy to entertain all of you once a month with these. And of course, Adam and I on our live stream broadcast. We love doing those as well. So watch us on YouTube, Facebook, and of course, Instagram for the videos. And we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts um, for all of the podcasts. So you can listen 
uh, to us when you're working out uh, or driving to work. So I'm going to thank you very much for watching. I'm going to end off today with a super cool video of a streetcar drive through Vancouver in 1907. I hope you enjoy it. I'm Marty Pospisil. Have a great, great, great April, and we'll see you next month. Thank <laughs> you.